Hello there, fellow fans of underage online gambling. It is time for another shop view. Let's see what is worth it. And it is not this, because you can spend about, I think, 150,000 gold on mystery boxes, which is one of the worst types of crates that World of Tanks Blitz even has. So, yeah, you're gonna get 100 gold, not 100k. So you're just wasting your money on this completely. And then there's also a badger draw. That's not worth it, because you can buy the badger in the shop for real. And the XM66F, the Christmas tank from last year, is now available, still not properly, but is available in crates, which, again, is not going to be worth it. In the event offer section, we have a lot of American stuff right here, because, you know, they do celebrate getting rid of the red coats. You can buy a lot of gambling containers right here, and the... Uh, you could then, with that, buy a tier 60, which I, I don't recommend at all. I mean, owning the tier 60 is like owning a red hat with four letters on it. Kind of makes you look a bit stupid. I don't recommend having a look at that. The endurance, I mean, I have no opinion on this vehicle. If you like Star Trek, if you want the look of the vehicle, cool. Otherwise, it's sort of like the mutants. Like, it's a tier 7, so it's pointless beyond you're a fan of the lore. You can get it with the Battle Pass, so if this is what floats your boat, go for it. Like, Battle Pass is still going to be good. I can recommend that to some degree. And then there's the XM containers, so just ignore that. Doesn't matter. Now we're going to go through to the resources. No credits. This is pretty good. 500 of each booster for this kind of pack. Not bad, obviously. Keep in mind that if you still have the double gold offers down here... Again, you can just get double the amount of gold. These are going to be slightly better, um, obviously, than the offers up here. But if you don't have those, then these can be pretty useful uh, with the boosters, too. Especially grind a new tech tree. Get all the boosters that you need. So I can sort of recommend those, again, if they are within your budget. Now we look at the tank section. And hello there, my sunshine. This is a great deal. You didn't hear me? He say that in a while, did you? This vehicle, only one downside is its low alpha damage of 190, but it's got good armor, it's got good mobility, decent DPM, 10 degrees of gun depression, pretty damn good penetration, 0.3 accuracy, everything about this tank is pretty damn solid, except the alpha damage, that's what we're gonna have to deal with, but this is a good tank, 8.5k for 25 unlocked, times 5 as well in here, and these epic boosters, that is a pretty solid deal. Unfortunately, this is an attachment container, so not much value there, but who can complain about this? I think 8.5k for these boosters for the tank with equipment and 25 unlocked is a pretty damn good deal. So I can recommend that pretty much. And we have the Space Guard. Now, 10k for these three. Not the ideal selection. I would have loved to see uh, two tier eights for this kind of price, but the th times fives are unlocked, which is great. The T23 is a tier 7, which you can use to challenge yourself with, to have fun. It does have high DPM, has no armor whatsoever, basically, besides the gun mount where you can not get pen sometimes. But high DPM, not really that much penetration. It does work. Um, it's a fun little tank, but nothing really serious to, like, grind credits or, or anything with that. Um, and the Panzer 4S is, um, is a tier 6. It's even more irrelevant, basically. But it can be fun. It is a solid tier 6. So basically, if you like space and you want the times 5s, it's not the worst bundle, to be honest. But I personally would have loved a selection of two tier 8s here instead of a, a tier 7 and a tier 6. But hey, can't have them all as good as this right here. Now, 30 euros, not bad. I mean, the times 5s are locked this time, which is worse. You still get the epic boosters, though. You get 30 days of premium, which is pretty nice. And you get... Mystery boxes, which are still terrible. So 30 euros for this. The bundle is good. Right? I gotta say, the bundle here is good. But the shop here, sure. This is like, what's the damn point? I mean, if you're a really good player and you love styling on noobs, sure, send it. Go for it. But if you're anything between the average player, the casual player, just stay away from it. Ignore it. It is a has a good gun, but absolutely no armor whatsoever. It's not as mobile as it should be, basically. The bundle's good, tank's okay, so if you're a good player, could be useful. But if you're an average player or anything like that, just, just stay away from that. Nah, too much. 
right here. 12k, too much. But the times fives are unlocked. I love that, right? I don't know if Wargaming has actually listened to me, but I see a lot more unlocked times fives in recent times in the shop than in the past. So, Wargaming man, I hope you're listening. Keep doing it. You're doing a great job putting the unlocked times fives in there. You're doing great with that specifically. There were bundles with other tier eights for 9k, for 10k before, so there's no reason to put these two vehicles, which are probably slightly above average, um, in a bundle that costs 12. So, yeah, I mean, I would not recommend it generally. I wouldn't recommend the one to one B either. Just pretty much one of the worst, if not the worst, tier 10 medium collector. I mean, it's kind of fighting down there with the 907 and the Karo. You can just get, get the regular one to one You're going to have a better gun that can't hit anything on the move, but you're actually going to have a great gun on a vehicle where this is just like, hello, I'm a terrible copy of a T-62A. And uh, that's about it. And now we go into the depth of hell, which is the crates. It's not too many down here. Well, mainly because they're all up here now again. So um, that's a bit sad. But as always, stay the frick away from crates. Is this vehicle worth buying? Well, it's in crates, so absolutely not, of course. But, for example, compared to the E4, it has 410 alpha damage, which is terrible for the tanks. Draw. Very good accuracy, though. 10 degrees of gun depression, which is very useful. Solid enough mobility. I mean, it's, still, it's not fast, but it is better than the E4, for example. And armor that is eh, slightly worse, but you're still going to be able to fend off a lot of shots in this vehicle. Now, the 10 degrees of gun depression are going to help you play at ridge lines quite well. The Capolas are pretty small, so they're going to be pretty hard to hit. Just move the vehicle back and forth all the time. Remember, movement can act as armor because if the enemy can't aim and you move your vehicle back and forth, especially if you have a vehicle that has a quite small profile, then you're going to absolutely maximize uh, the enemy's inability to shoot at you. So keep your vehicle moving back and forth, left and right. Be unpredictable because that way you can essentially extend the usefulness of your armor. And I would do that with any vehicle. You do it with a mouse or a leopard. Just keep the damn thing wiggling. Obviously, it helps if you have good movement accuracy because then when you stop and fire, you have a more accurate shot immediately. But with a vehicle like this, you have a 45 degree left right limit, which it's not bad really for a tank destroyer, but it is still pretty bad when you have to fight a medium tank or any of that sort. And 410 alpha damage really isn't great at fighting heavy tanks either because a lot of them have 460 or even more alpha damage. So that's not really the, the goal of this vehicle. Kind of the, that's the big main problem of the tank. Like it doesn't really have its own place, right? It has extremely low alpha damage. It's not really that fast. It has extremely high DPM. So if you're trying to out DPM somebody, that's where you're at. But you're also quite limited in terms of your traverse and your mobility. But you can't do much in that regard. So you don't want to brawl with the medium because they're just going to drive around you. You don't want to brawl with the heavy because they can outtrade you. So you want to be very careful with this thing. Sniping isn't ideal either. So you play this sort of second line. Kind of just like you play the E4. Just you have to peek a lot more often. Um, that's kind of how I would recommend playing this vehicle. I mean, that's not what I'm doing in this game because I'm just... YOLOing forward and seeing what happens because I'm playing Blitz for 10 years. I want to have fun. I no, I no longer care about playing optimally. I care about how do I throw as best as I can while still doing high damage. But if that's not you, if you still want to learn stuff, don't buy this vehicle, right? There are great tier 10 tank destroyers that you can obtain. Not this one, because it's in crates. And remember again, Forget everything I said in the last three minutes because my opinion on tank destroyer is, by my own admission, irrelevant because I don't like tank destroyers. So with that said, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.